Yeah, so let's talk about it. This is based on really good science, uh, and uh, we're excited to be one of the first companies and the only company to be in humans with this technology. So what we're seeing is a 600 base pair increase in my T lymphocytes. Uh, we've seen a 50% reduction in triglyceride levels, which means better heart health. Uh, we've seen a six-fold reduction in C-reactive proteins that were regular and normal uh, when I took the initial tests. And uh, we've seen a 25% reduction in my blood glucose levels. And of course, my HbA1Cs are, are really low for, um, for anyone of the same age group. So these are some of the basic things we've seen. We've also seen muscle mass increase and intramuscular fat decrease. Uh, so obviously, we're really excited about this. We were excited to go first, and we're excited about patients uh, coming in and taking part of these therapies. So how much for, more effective do you think your solution is going to be versus the supplements that are already out in the market, such as TA65 and related supplements? Right, so supplements, what they do is they go through a throughput analysis and they just look for any sort of telomerase activation. They're trying to take the repressor off the HTERT gene and activate some telomerase. And this was all based on the science that was done looking at the actual gene therapies themselves and the benefits that they had. But there's no definitive results that any of those nutraceuticals or small molecules work. And the gene therapy absolutely does work. Uh, so we're working with technology that is a sure win. The technology definitely does work is a bold statement. Have you been able to back that up beyond the results of yourself? How widely deployed are you? Yeah, well, so when we actually look at animal studies and cell studies, we know that it works. But how we get it to work in a whole human body is the next leg of, of translating the medicine. So that's called titration. So if we can get the gene into a cell, it definitely lengthens the telomere. But will it reverse the aging in an entire body? Uh, this is what we're on to now. So BioViva is a translational engine for all research that we think is ready for humans. So we'll translate a lot of different um, therapies to clinics uh, where we can perform these therapies, but for telomere lengthening, the goal is to find the titration, the amount, the dose that it takes to actually affect the whole organism, and that is a tough problem. Does lengthening the telomeres reverse the aging process on its own, or do you need to be using a combination of gene therapies, and how would that look? Yeah, so the reason that we want to bring lots of different companies into our clinics is we know that we'll need a combinatorial therapy. It's going to be more than just one therapy. There's 10 hallmarks to aging, okay? And it, it would be really important that everyone looks at those 10 hallmarks because in the future, those will be considered the 10 diseases of being alive. Uh, we call it all aging. It all fits into aging. And it, what drives all of the diseases that we die of when we die of aging diseases, like Alzheimer's, cancer, and heart disease. So the idea is to target these, and telomerase induction targets many of the hallmarks of aging, but it may not target all of them. So what we need to do is lots of prognostics and diagnostics on these patients before and after, see what we've actually affected and what still needs new therapies. So we're looking at a plethora of different therapies that tackle these hallmarks that science is working on now to bring them to clinic. Do you think that there are new risks that are being introduced by these new technologies and therapies as they roll out? And what do you think the negative outcomes could look like? I think that we, we will head towards positive outcomes. Uh, there's always minor setbacks, but right now over 110,000 people die of aging every day. So that's close to 40 million every year. Of adverse drug effects of the drugs already on the market, it's over 100,000 just in the U.S. alone. And this just goes untalked about. We have to become res less risk adverse in order to move forward new technology. So all technology comes at some risk, but right now the risk that we're taking is, is a risk that we need to walk away from and we need to pioneer new medicine.